Good afternoon everyone and welcome to Northumberland Zoo on YouTube. My name is Maxine. I am the curator here at Northumberland Zoo. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, on today's episode, uh, I wanted to kind of do a bit of an in-depth look at our raccoons. Um, raccoons are definitely one of our most popular animals here at the zoo. They're located down the bottom of the end of the zoo next to the snow leopards if you've never been before. Um, and we've got a group of raccoons here, one of the largest groups in Europe, and this enclosure is one of the largest enclosures in Europe as well. Um, and they are a super special species. They are very, very popular. Um, they've been made a lot more popular because of social media and uh, memes and stuff like that. Raccoons are just so much fun. So what I wanted to do was I just wanted to take you to let you meet the raccoons, see what the enclosure is all about, and learn a bit more about them. So as you may or may not know, raccoons are from North America. They are considered a bit of a pest in the States, which is a shame, but it's because they are so incredibly opportunistic and very, very intelligent. Um, so they've got amazing little fingers and a little thumb, makes them extremely dexterous, makes it really, really easy for them to get into things. And they, be, they can be quite naughty, and I think that's one of the reasons why they're so popular on social media, because they're just so amusing. Uh, so down here we've got our main enclosure here, which didn't require a great deal of building. We just had to put a fence up around an amazing like, like little natural spot. We've got a lovely big oak tree in the middle there and some silver birch and some hawthorn and uh, different plants that are back up in there. The raccoons, obviously they're arboreal, they love to climb. So, and then back at the back there, we kind of blocked up a bit of a field drain and made them a natural pond. Um, so they've got all kinds of different things in here and obviously the keepers have built them some amazing platforms and things for them to climb on too, which is great for the raccoons but also great for the public because it raises them up and makes them more prominent. Then, obviously raccoons are social creatures, they live together, they live in groups generally and they generally tend to get along. Well, just in case they don't get along or for whatever reason we have any kind of uh, ding-dongs within the group, we do have a lot of separation areas. So we have got an outdoor kind of holding pen here, and this is ideal for when we've got high winds. So if ever the gusts at the zoo get over like 40, 45 mile an hour, we can lock the raccoons back here so that they're completely secured. Because the last thing that we want is for one of these big trees to come down and all the raccoons will be running loose all over Northumberland because we would get in big trouble. Um, so we've got this outdoor kind of holding area in here, and then there's three separate holding areas inside of this house here. So this isn't a place that you normally get to go. So, you know, we used to do raccoon encounters and they used to be super popular. People would travel all over the country to come and see us and see our raccoons. Um, but now we're not allowed to do them. And the reason is, is because raccoons are classed as an invasive species. An invasive species is an animal which can easily kind of take root and start living in the UK. So raccoon is definitely one of those animals because they're extremely opportunistic. They can live in rural, area, rural and urban areas, um, hence the name trash panda, but they're very, very adaptive. So if they did, for whatever reason, get out of here, they would be able to establish themselves quite well. Um, so we have to be very, very particular about how we keep them in, check the trees quite regularly to make sure that they're still in good condition. Um, Cause the last thing we want is to be responsible for an outbreak of raccoons in the UK. Even though you guys might think that's amazing, it's not so great on the native wildlife. So raccoons would predate on our native bird's eggs, they would raid nests, they would eat lizards, they would eat frogs, they would eat plants, loads of stuff that's not used to getting eaten by raccoons and they would potentially make some native species extinct. So that's why they're classed as invasive species. Now, if you're unlucky enough to be listed as an invasive species, that means that you're not allowed to promote them. Um, so sadly, since they were, since the invasive species licensing changed um, in 2021, you can now no longer promote the species. So you can't do raccoon encounters. You can't do anything that involves people coming in and interacting with raccoons because what they don't want to do is promote members of the public getting raccoons as pets 
keeping them at home, getting sick of them after six to eight months, which is generally how long it takes, and then letting them loose in the wild. With the invasive species ban, that means that you can't breed them um, and you can't sell them, you can't trade them, you can't do anything with them. So once our little population here dies out, that'll be it, there'll be no more. So I think our youngest one here is Ralph and he's seven. So it is a shame because obviously they're such a popular species and obviously we don't breed them. We just show them and people love them. Um, my argument is, is that, you know, having raccoons here, yes, they're in the bad books because, you know, they're potentially invasive, but they bring people to the zoo. And when they bring people to the zoo, they potentially become educated about something else, you know, a more endangered species. They put their money into the zoo, which then allows us to do our conservation projects. So from my point of view, I don't think that they should have banned them in the way that they have. I think obviously certain people who are more responsible should be allowed to keep them. But unfortunately with the illegal pet trades, it's just too easy to get hold of these animals. And unless they put on strict bans like what they have, then they'll never prevent, like, they'll never be able to prevent what they think is gonna happen. I know that there's already some random rogue raccoons in Durham somewhere that have got out. And because they survive so well, they'll find a female, they'll mate, and they breed really well as well. So in the wilds of North America, there are 22 different subspecies of raccoons recognized, which is an unbelievable amount. And for those of you who don't know what a subspecies is, it's basically kind of like a type of raccoon. It's almost kind of like breeds of dog. Subspecies are able to interbreed with each other and produce viable offspring. I think when private breeders and people have taken raccoons from the wild, obviously they've taken them from here, there and everywhere. Each type of raccoon is obviously adapted to its specific habitat. Some of them are darker, some of them are lighter, depending on where they come from. And obviously this captive population of kind of like mongrel raccoons has been produced. So don't ask me which type of subspecies that we've got here, because we've got no idea. We've got ones that are slightly fluffy and brown. We've got ones that have got like a stripe that go down the middle of their face. We've got really, really dark, tiny, small ones. So it's just kind of amalgamation of all the different types of subspecies of raccoons. And if you would like to see and learn more about each individual raccoon that we have here at the zoo, when you log on to the zoolife.tv camera, you can actually see a list of all the different raccoons that live in the habitat with little identification photos, or you can download our zoo app and in there through the animal section, you can actually look through at raccoons and see every single raccoon that we've got, learn their names, see their photos, so that next time you come to the zoo, you might have a chance to identify who they are. Something really cool that's happened down here at the raccoons is that we have got a 24 hour live webcam. And if you haven't done it already, you should be downloading our zoo app um, and you will have access, free access to this webcam here which is a pan, tilt and zoom jobby. And there are people all around the world right now that are plugged into this camera and they're zooming in and panning around on our raccoons, which is amazing. So there's people watching them all the time, watching their behaviors, which is brilliant. And if you download our app, you can actually get free access onto this webcam and the Snow Leopard webcam. It's through a service called Zoo Life TV, zoolife.tv. And you can take screenshots, you can do recordings, you can chat in the little chat box. And if we ever do any little ad hoc animal talks, you can be part of that too. So if you haven't done already, then do download our app. It's available on the App Store and the Google Play Store as well. And now it's time to give the raccoons one of their daily feeds. So I met up with Keeper Liam. Raccoons, come on. So we've got crickets, dog biscuit, uh, peanuts, sunflower seeds, all sorts of stuff. They're very, they're very omnivorous animals, so we give them a, a wide variety of a diet, really. Uh, I love working with the raccoons, proper big characters. Um, they're all like individual characters as well. I know that sounds weird, but some animals you can't really like tell the difference in the character sometimes. It's all very, they're all very like similar, but these guys, each individual one has their own unique personality, which is really cool. Tommy's my favourite. He's probably the favourite for most of the keepers, to be honest, just because um, he's just like really friendly and like he's always coming up to you and um, like saying hello and stuff and trying to climb you, which obviously isn't ideal, but it's quite cute. So Tommy's like really slender. He's also quite small. One of the main things we look for when ID and Tommy is he's got like a cloudy, one of his eyes is really cloudy. I, I really like using stuff that they can get their hands into just because they're really dexterous. Um, 
they've got five digits on the on the hands so um, they can like pull stuff out of things and that because they're so omnivorous we can put all sorts of different stuff in there um, peanut butter is a solid favorite so what's your opinion on the invasive species thing and not being allowed to use raccoons anymore it's fair, I do agree with it, just because a lot of people, um, when we see them being used in like encounters and stuff, because the ones that we use are really friendly, they might think that it's like a good pet to have, whereas obviously they aren't a good pet to have. Um, they need a lot of space, they eat a lot of food, um, and obviously we just, they're, at the end of the day, they're wild animals. So as, as much as I talk about like Tommy being friendly and that, we'd, we'd, we'd never be able to like fully domesticate them. Um, so yeah, I think it's a, a, a good thing to do. Just make sure that people don't get the wrong message with the raccoons. Our oldest raccoon here, um, funnily enough, with our, one of our first kind of exotic animals that we ever got was Bert. Um, and Bert is a lovely little soul. He was someone's house pet. So he was kept in someone's house for about six to eight months. And obviously then they decided that raccoons weren't meant to live in houses anymore. And we got in touch with them and they drove them all the way up from down south. I think the number one rule that people will say about raccoons is the fact that everything is yours is theirs and everything that's there is theirs. And that is so true. You can never take anything off a raccoon if it's in your house and there's a raccoon in your house, everything belongs to them. And if you try and take anything, they can get quite aggressive. So they are absolutely not pets. I know they look super cute. Um, but they're just not. Um, Bert came to us back in 2010, so that was almost 13 years ago. Um, so he's certainly done really, really well for his age. But last week we were noticing that there was a few things about him that were not quite right. He was slowing down a little bit and his face looked a little bit swollen. Um, I got some video of it actually the day that it happened. Um, so we decided to take him to the vets and uh, get him checked up on. Bert's a really well-behaved raccoon compared to some of them um, and he went straight in the crates for Lucy and Hannah, um, our head keepers, and went off to the local vets which is just 10 minutes down the road. Um, the idea is is that we're gonna anaesthetize him and have a little look and see what's going on. Uh, he's been showing some really unusual symptoms in the last few weeks where he seems to have slowed down. He's already on some medication for his joints because he's, you know, he's He's like 13 years old. We've seen some worrying signs in the last few weeks where um, he's kind of got a bit of a swelling on the side of his face. So we just want him to go down to the vets and get checked out. So we got a call from the vets. So Bert went off in the morning and we got a call. Um, they'd anaesthetized him and the first thing they did was take an x-ray. Um, calling us that quickly, we knew that it wasn't going to be good news uh, and sadly it wasn't. Um, so they talked us through what was on the x-ray and uh, had found that unfortunately um, Bert's heart was failing and he had a lot of fluid in his chest cavity. So on the x-ray here, you can see this is the chest cavity here, now just where these ribs end. All of that is covered with fluid, that's why we can't see the heart anymore or um, any gases or anything in there. Now this up here, uh, that is what's functioning of his lungs, so as you can see his lungs weren't functioning very well anymore. And then we have some little dots along here on the lungs and they are just little tumours um, all over his lungs as well. So this is um, an x-ray of one of our other raccoons and it's just to show you the difference. Um, so we can see a lot of black on here. Now these are gases and things like that so that's what you should be able to see on a normal x-ray. Um, but because obviously Bert had all that fluid we couldn't see any of that. You can also see his heart and some other organs um, which again you couldn't see with Bert. To be honest, the vets didn't actually know how he was still functioning. They were really, really surprised um, that he was alive. His, the capacity in which his lungs were working was 10%, essentially, which is not very much, and his heart was failing. So unfortunately, if we hadn't have got him checked, um, he would have sadly passed away. So we had to, what we did was the right decision because it meant that Bert wasn't in any pain and um, he's, he's in peace now. Um, but yeah, this is definitely one of the hardest parts. Bert has been here for a long time and he was such a character. So it's always hard to say goodbye. So it's been a bit of a difficult week here at the zoo. Uh, obviously saying goodbye to Bert is one of the hardest things because he's one of our original founding animals. He's lived here for 13 years. Um, so that was a bit of a, it's a bit of a shock. I don't think it was unexpected, but it just, you, you can never be prepared. 
um, Bert was such a sweetheart and I know he was a favorite of my mom who loved him to bits and he was a favorite of a few of our keepers as well so it's always sad having to say goodbye to your animals but that's part of what this job and this industry is about and I wanted to share it with you because it's not always rosy and happy times skipping around at the zoo it's sometimes it is really tough so on that note I wanted to leave you with a little tribute I put together of Bert and his time here at Northumberland Zoo we'll see you next week <laughs>